No, no. It's got anyway. It's got. Um, it's basically says like death or glory, and it's kind of about um, Axel's expectation and Odin's expectation for his situation in the world. So there are small, like you say, Easter eggs in the in the costume, in particularly, and the artwork at Axel's house as well, all reflects their own attitude and. Um, moments that they've had throughout their relationships, um, Axel and um, Zed's relationship, who was flatmates, where they've been drunk wandering home one night and stolen a stop sign, or where they've found a trampoline on the side of the road and brought it home to their to their own front yard. So everything has a story behind it, um, and and everything is is considered. Is it like that in the one thing? Tim, Everything is considered. Of, of course, it's considered. But do you? Is there any writing that involves specific direction about what the set or what the um, costume may look like? Uh, only if it's story related. I mean, mm-hmm. um, when you introduce a character like, for argument's sake, Thor. You know, our the Almighty Johnson's version of Thor is very much a king country farmer <laughs> type that is specific to New Zealand, and that is kind of articulated in the script. Um, a set like in series two, Mike, you know, wins a bar, and the bar. Which careful, is, careful. What? I don't know what season they're up to. Well, he might win a bar, <laughs> <laughs> but the history behind the bar. Also, if, if he won a bar, if he did, then he would. It would be a specific bar, and that was that was that would be written in the script. I think. I don't. I, I won't say anymore. <laughs> Failing. <laughs> Yeah, the, the bar may have very, very significant um, purpose. Yeah, if, yeah, if there was a bar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually expect a lot of the people who will be watching this interview won't actually have um, watched any Almighty Johnsons. So uh, I think uh, you'll be meeting oh, a whole new you're audience. In that's, that's... Hmm. Um, United States show, or you, you slightly covered this already, but US shows tend to have wealthy characters with expensive houses, modern cars and wardrobes from designers. Uh, in, in contrast, the Almighty Johnson's is much more realistic. A builder struggling to make ends meet after being ripped off, a student living in a share house with mismatched furniture and a bomb of a car, and as you said, things that he's found on the way home. <laughs> why, ha- why have the um, why have you chosen to do it this way? And do you think it adds to the the comedy and the the realism? I think it's um, accessibility and relatability. Mm. You know, not everyone in the world is is rich and has designer clothing and lives in a mansion. Um, quite the opposite, <coughs> in fact. And we've created characters and and situations for these characters where anyone can relate to those situations and, and how they live their lives. Also, the other important part, I think, is it was always a very risky premise when the show was both pitched and commissioned. You know, for ordinary blokes who happened to be descended from Norse gods, what the audience were going to have to buy into was that these guys were gods of some mm-hmm. kind. So the more they seemed based in reality, as you say, a builder and a student, a guy that works in PR and a fridge repairman, um, the, the more they were anchored in reality, the better chance we had of the audience b- buying into and relating to these guys as gods as well. And that was key to its success, and, and, and it worked on that level. Hmm. How difficult is it to write or direct an episode when you're one of the primary actors? And what are the differences this makes for you? I'll put it out there right now. I unfortunately didn't direct any episodes. Oh. Um, yeah. Um, he took his clothes off. I, I did take my clothes off quite a lot. Um, yeah, so, that's so you've got to watch it for that. <laughs> if he had directed an episode, God knows what he might have done as well. Yeah. Yep. So we, when he just kept taking his clothes off, we just went, okay, Emmett, I know you're keen. Yep. You're just out of drama school. We'll let you take it off a little bit. You can't take them off all the time. In a way, that's directing from the inside because it immediately puts people in a certain mindset and and encourages them to to act in a certain way. I feel quite proud of that, actually. However, uh, to answer the other half of the question, which is uh, writing and performing, it is a real, it's a surprisingly uh, tricky challenge. And um, I've done it a 
couple of times, but it isn't. It, it is a. Um, there's a bit of a mind switch you have to make, which is, if you, fortunately in our in our case, the writing process is done before we go into shooting. So, to a certain extent, the storyline and the writing is done, and as me, me as a as writer then becomes actor, I can kind of leave it behind, and I I make have to make a very conscious choice to just forget about it. And the best days are the days when you walk on set or doing a scene and you're going, I'm not entirely sure what the writer meant here. Oh, oh, I wrote it. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, that, uh, that, and I mean that in all seriousness. If, if you can forget that you wrote it, uh, you're in a good place, I think, as, a, as an actor. And uh, that actually has happened on several occasions. And uh, it's good. Um, but it is important to forget that you've written it because otherwise you run the risk of being the, the actor who's written it and trying to advise the director who wasn't him that uh, <laughs> on, on how to do the scene and that, and that would be bad for everybody. So it's about it's very important to know your place at any given time. Yeah. What was that, Fern? <laughs> no. no, but Fern is over there. Hello. Hi. Um, they say comedy is all in the timing. How much of the timing is in, in the acting, the writing, the directing, and how much is in the editing room? I, I, I agree that the editing um, can often help with timing, but it has to be right on the day on, as an actor doing it on camera. You can't... You, you, what editing can do is take something that's good and, and just make it extra special. But if it's not good in the first place, you it basically ends up on the floor and not being used. There's no there's no magic bullet there. So um, I think we're really fortunate in the Johnsons with the whole cast. Actually, They're, it's a great cast, and um, you know people like Emmett and and Dina Gorman who plays Anders and and, and Jared and Fern. Uh, they all have excellent timing, and the show, uh, I think the writing and, and the sh style of the show allows that stuff to shine through. Mm. Um, the Almighty Johnsons is a comedy, but at the same time it's dealing with real issues such as date rape, domestic violence and relationships in general. How have you personally engaged with these issues while working on the show? Well, there's been a, a certain amount of um, publicity around those kinds of things and being involved in certain groups, um, which I, I can't name. One of them is What The F, which is a, um, a organisation over here that's about the um, um, encouraging the comfortability and um, uh, reassurance of... of uh, um, homosexuality and bisexuality in New Zealand um, but also on set we all of those situations are treated um, quite carefully uh, you know just like you do with a, a sex scene all of those moments of such as the domestic violence they're spoken through with the cast and the director they're they're treated very carefully when they're filmed at the time uh, nothing is, is thrown around and, and done willy-nilly. It's, it's all very, um, I'd say, precious without being taboo. Mm. It's, um, it has to be considered, care. yes, because we have a broadcasting standards authority here too, so anything that is dealing in those areas, it gets run by those people uh, before it goes to air anyway, so that any anything that's questionable has had a professional objective eye taken on it, and uh, no one... <coughs> No one wants to uh, run roughshod over that sort of stuff. So there's, there's good checks and balances in place. How hard is it for you as, as people, though? I mean, like Marina Baccarin, who's working in um, Homeland, she was saying that she and Claire Danes have spent a lot of evenings, you know, drinking a bit of wine afterwards because it's, it's really deep stuff that they're dealing with. How, how difficult is it for you on a, on a personal level? 